Today, we're gonna to look at complex numbers and we're gonna look at them in rectangular form, which hopefully you've dealt with before and looking at them in polar form. So recall in front of you, we have Z is equal to X plus IY. That is a complex number where X is in the real, is the real part and Y is the imaginary part. So let's look at a complex number and plotting it on the rectangular coordinate system. So if we had Z is equal to one plus I, one is the real part of this imaginary number. Um, and then it could, because of one I, one is the imaginary part also of this complex number. To plot a point, a complex number, we treat the Y axis of the rectangular coordinate system as our imaginary part and the X coordinate um, axis as the real part. So in this case, I would just go over one and the X to the right, and I would go up one because of the I value, and I would have this point here. And so that would be a point plotted in um, the rectangular form. If I wanted to plot the point, let's say Z is equal to, two minus three I. So looking at this, my real part is two and my imaginary part is negative three. And so to plot this point, I would be down here in the fourth quadrant. I would go over to the right two and I would go down three. And we would write this as a coordinate um, to negative three in this rectangular form of this complex number. So let's look at a definition really quickly, and then we'll start looking at converting these into polar form. So the magnitude or modulus is what we're gonna be looking at. So suppose Z is equal to X plus YI is a complex number. The magnitude or modulus of Z denoted by the absolute value symbols around the Z is the distance from the origin to the point XY. That is the magnitude of Z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So let's go back to one of our complex numbers that we had. So let's say that again, z is equal to one plus i. Let's plot that again. So I go to the right one and I will go up one. So if we look at this, we can form our triangle. And so our distance of our imaginary part is one. Our distance for our, our real part from the origin is one. And so we can look at the magnitude, this length in here, from the origin to our point that we plotted. In this case, it is Z, absolute value of Z, is equal to the square root of one squared plus one squared underneath that radical, which is equal to the square root of two. So this is similar to what we were doing before, looking at R and looking at our right triangles and or finding the hypotenuse of our right triangle. So nothing new that we, we haven't done in the past. So let's look at this in the polar form. And so in polar form, recall, we saw that X was equal to our cosine theta and y was equal to our sine theta.
And we saw that R was equal to, or R squared was equal to X squared plus Y squared. And so we have this angle in here, theta. And so our X value is R cosine theta, our Y value is R sine theta. And we just found out what Z is, which was the square root of two, absolute value of Z. Um, and so we can write this in this form, our point here, our cosine theta, our sine theta. So if we plug that in, we would have, so looking at this again, Z is equal to X plus I Y. Z is equal to X, which is our cosine theta, plus I, or let me put parentheses around here, our sine theta, I. And so Z here, we can factor out our R if we like, R times cosine theta, plus a lot of times we put the I in front of the trigonometric function. So we don't think of I being part of that argument, that angle theta. So Z is equal to R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. And that would be in polar form. So we need to figure out what theta is. And so looking at this, we can figure out what theta is. We have, looking at our triangle, we have our opposite side, we have our adjacent side. Um, we actually figured out what our hypotenuse was, which was root two. Um, so let's look at one of our trigonometric functions here. And so if we looked at it, we know if we look opposite and adjacent, the one that we were given to, we know that tangent theta is equal to opposite which is one over the adjacent, which is one. So we're looking at when is tangent theta equal to one? We're here in that first quadrant. And so theta um, would equal to pi force. We found that the absolute value of Z is root two. And it ends up being, and this is a rule here, that the absolute value of Z, we can just say is equal to R. Here's another rule. This is our polar form of our complex number. So let's plug that in and we would have the polar form of our complex number. So Z is equal to R, which is root two, all times cosine of theta, which we saw was pi force, plus I sine of pi force. So this is the polar form of our complex number, one plus I. I don't know why my pen is racing as uh, E equals one plus I. So let me pull down some definitions for you and we'll look at those. And they're pretty much just what I just dated. 
Okay, so in front of us, we have the polar form of a complex number. The polar form of complex number is another way to represent a complex number. The form Z equals A plus BI is called the rectangular coordinates form of the complex number. So we had just written it as Z is equal to X plus YI. In this case, Z equals A plus BI. A is the real part, B is the imaginary part. Then looking at the picture, if we plot the point AB on that um, rectangular coordinate system where the Y axis was our imaginary and the X axis was our real part and formed our triangle, the horizontal axis is the real axis, vertical axis is the imaginary axis. We find that the real and complex components in the terms of R and theta, where R is the length of the vector and theta is the angle made by the real axis. So using that Pythagorean theorem, we saw that R squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So by using our trigonometric um, ratios, we know that cosine theta is equal to the x value, which is a in this case, all over our hypotenuse, which is r. And sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is b, all over r. So multiplying each side by r, we have r cosine theta equals a, and um, r sine theta is equal to b. So the rectangular form of our complex number z equals a plus b i is equal to r cosine theta plus r sine theta times i. Factoring out that r, we get r times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta. So in the case of a complex number, r represents the absolute value or the modulus or magnitude, that's another way to say it, and the angle theta is called the argument of our complex number. So in here it says, this can be summarized as follows. The polar form of the complex number Z equals A plus BI is Z is equal to R cosine theta plus I sine theta, where that was the quantity parentheses around R, cosine theta plus I sine theta all times R. R is equal to the absolute value of Z, which is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared, where A is equal to R cosine theta, B is equal to R sine theta. And we can find our angle theta by looking at the tangent inverse of B over A, opposite over adjacent, where A is greater than zero, theta is equal to tangent inverse of B over A plus pi, or theta is equal to tangent inverse of B over A plus 180 degrees. We know pi is equal to 180 degrees when our value of A is less than zero. So let's look at some examples of converting these um, complex numbers into polar form. So let me pull up an example here. So let's say that we have an example where Z is equal to Um, five plus two i. And we want to put this in polar form. So rewrite. In polar form. This is a little annoying where my pen keeps erasing itself. Um, okay, so let's look at this. Z is equal to five plus two I. So let's look at plotting our point. So let's form our triangle. So we know that again, X is equal to R cosine theta. 
and y is equal to r sine theta. So let's find this value of r in here. r is equal to the absolute value of z, which is the magnitude of z, or also called the modulus of z. So this is equal to the square root of x squared, so five squared, plus y squared, which in our case is two squared. So we have the square root of 25 plus four, which is equal to the square root of 29. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's figure out what theta is. Well, I know that tangent theta is equal to opposite, which in this case is two, over the adjacent, which is five. So theta is equal to the tangent inverse of two fifths. So if we go through and find that argument, you'll see that theta is approximately 0 0.38, where theta is in radians. So looking at this, we get that z is equal to r, which is square root of 29, all times cosine theta. So cosine of 0 0.38 radians plus i sine theta, and theta again is 0 0.38, so sine is 0 0.38 radians. So this is the polar form of our complex number. So let's pull another example. So the example in front of us now is z is equal to one minus i times root three. So our real part is one and our imaginary part is negative square root of three. So let's plot that. So going over one and going down root three. We get our point. We can form our triangle. Form a triangle, it's always with the x axis. So let's figure out what r is. r is equal to the square root of our real part squared, so one squared, plus our imaginary part squared, so root three squared. So in our case, r is equal to the square root of one plus three, or the square root of four, and the square root of four is equal to two. So r is equal to two. Let's figure out what theta is. So theta, I'm gonna call it theta sub r for now, because that really is our reference angle in that fourth quadrant. And so tangent of this reference angle theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So our opposite is root three all over our adjacent, which is one. So thinking about what angle gives us back tangent of that angle, root three. And so that's 60 degrees, or that was pi thirds.
but we're technically down here in our fourth quadrant. And so our theta here, this is equal to two pi minus pi thirds. Um, so two pi, I've got to think about this. So that would be five pi thirds. So we know what theta is, we know what r is. So our value z is equal to r, which is two, all times cosine of theta, which is five pi thirds plus pi sine theta or sine of five pi thirds. So here's our polar form of the rectangular form of our complex number of one minus root three i. So I don't think this is too bad because we've looked at plotting polar coordinates before plotting um, in the real coordinate system and converting back and forth. And so that's just kind of using what we've learned from um, the first section of this, this chapter. So let's go back in the opposite direction. So let's say that we're giving it a complex number in polar form and we wanna convert it into rectangular form. Let's say that we're given that z is equal to two all times cosine of five pi six plus i sine of five pi six. So the direction says, solve each of the complex numbers in rectangular form, or write each complex number in rectangular form. So all we're doing is we're evaluating these trigonometric functions at that angle of five pi six, and then multiplying it by two. And so we get z is equal to two, well, cosine of five pi six. And so if we graph that five pi six, is here in that fourth quadrant. Our reference angle in here is pi six. I know that cosine of pi six is one half. It's positive in that fourth quadrant. And so I'm gonna get one half for my X value or my real part plus i sine of five pi six. Well, my reference angle again is pi six. Sine of pi six is root three over two, but in the fourth quadrant, it's negative. So this would be negative root three over two. So let's just distribute our two. So I have two times one half, so that's one. And then a positive times a negative, so minus two times root three over two, the twos cancel. So I'll get root three times i or i root three. So here's our complex number in the rectangular form. Well, maybe looking at one more, let's say that you're given the complex number in polar form is four times cosine of seven pi fourths plus I sine of seven pi fourths.
So seven pi force, again, that would get me down into the fourth quadrant. My reference angle in the fourth quadrant is pi force. So I would get Z is equal to four times the quantity. Well, cosine of pi force I know is root two over two and cosine is positive in that fourth quadrant. Plus I sine of seven pi force. Well, reference angle again is pi force. Sine of pi force is root two over two. The sine again is negative in that fourth quadrant. So negative root two over two. Distributing our four, well, four times root two over two, two goes into four twice. This would give me two root two minus I, again, four times root two over two, it gives me two root two. So polar form is one way to write, um, our complex numbers, but there's also an exponential form that we can rewrite these complex numbers. So let me give you the definition of that. So Euler's formula says for any real number theta, E raised to the I theta is equal to cosine theta plus I sine theta. And so R times cosine theta plus I sine theta can equal or is equal to R times E to the I theta. Let's look at multiplication of our complex numbers. So let's say that we had Z sub one times Z sub two, where Z sub one is equal to, in the polar form, r sub one times cosine theta sub one plus i sine theta sub one. Now let's define z sub two to equal r sub two all times the quantity cosine of theta sub two plus i sine theta sub two. So we're gonna derive the formula here. And so multiplying z sub one plus z sub two, we have this r sub one, I'm just gonna distribute my r sub one. So r sub one cosine of theta sub one plus i times r sub one sine of theta sub one all times the quantity, so distributing the r sub two, r sub two cosine of theta sub two, plus i r sub two sine of theta sub two. So if we distribute this out, so we have this r sub one cosine of theta one times r sub two cosine of theta sub two. So r sub one, r sub two, cosine of theta sub one times cosine of theta sub two. We're gonna have a r sub one cosine of theta sub one plus i r sub two. So r sub one cosine of theta sub one times i r sub two sine of theta sub two plus, so now distributing the i r sub one sine theta sub one to each of the quantities in the second parentheses, we get i r sub one sine of theta sub one times r sub two cosine theta sub two and then we have I R sub one sine theta sub one times I R sub two sine theta sub two. So recall I times I is I squared. 
and I squared by definition is negative one. So taking that into consideration, we would get negative r sub one sine of theta sub one times r sub two cosine theta sub two. So let's just reorder this so that our real parts, the parts without the imaginary numbers are put together and um, And I made a little mistake right here. Um, so going back up, I was noticing something was off. When I distributed this right here to here, that would have been sine of theta sub one, r sub one um, times r sub two sine of theta sub two. This should be sine. So let's group those real parts together and let's factor out the r sub one, r sub two when we do that. So grouping these two together, I have r sub one, r sub two, all times cosine of theta sub one times cosine theta sub two minus sine of theta sub one, sine of theta sub two. And now let's group our imaginary parts together. So doing that, our imaginary parts, here is this r sub one cosine theta times i r sub two sine theta, and i r sub one sine theta sub one times r sub two um, cosine of theta sub two. So as I group those together, I am going to factor out what they have in common. So plus, they have the i in common. They also have the r sub one, r sub two in common. And factoring that out, I would be left with cosine theta sub one sine theta sub two plus sine theta sub one, cosine theta sub two. So hopefully what's inside that parentheses kind of looks familiar to you. If not, that's okay. Um, I will tell you and then hopefully once you see it, all right, tell you, um, if you didn't recognize it, you'll recognize it now. But notice that cosine theta sub one, cosine theta sub two minus sine theta sub one, sine theta sub two, cosine, cosine minus sine, sine. That is our um, difference or sum of two angles for cosine. So looking at that, this we can rewrite as r sub one, r sub two, so cosine, it was the opposite sign. And so that was the sum of the two angles, theta sub one plus theta sub two. And then cosine sine plus um, sine cosine or sine cosine plus sine cosine is how I would normally say it. That is the sum of two angles for sine. So let's rewrite this. So we have plus i, r sub one, r sub two. And that again was the sum of two angles for sine. So this would be sine of theta sub one plus theta sub two. So notice in that case, we can we have too many parentheses in here. We can factor out that r sub one, r sub two from both of those terms. So this is equal to r sub one, r sub two, 
all times cosine of theta sub one plus theta sub two plus I sine of theta sub one plus theta sub two. So this is saying if we're, comp we're multiplying two complex numbers together in polar form, all we need to do is multiply our R values together and then sum those two angles. And so Z sub one times Z sub two is equal to R sub one times R sub two, all times the quantity cosine of the sum of those two angles, theta sub one plus theta sub two, plus I sine of the sum of the two angles, theta sub one plus theta sub two. So rewriting this in um, exponential form, Z sub one times Z sub two, and this is equal to R sub one, R sub two, e all raised to the i times the angle, which in our case is theta sub one plus theta sub two. So this is the exponential form for multiplying two complex numbers. And then division, of two complex numbers. So let's look at that really quickly. So if we're looking at Z sub one divided by Z sub two. So Z sub one we said was R sub one times cosine of theta sub one plus I sine theta sub one divided by R sub two cosine of theta sub two plus I sine theta sub two. If we throw this into the exponential form, I think it will be a little bit easier um, so let's do that. Exponential form is R sub one e to the i theta sub one, all divided by R sub two e raised to the i theta sub two. So notice we have the same base of e in the numerator and the denominator, so we can use rules of exponents. And so recall that if we have the same base, b raised to the nth power divided by b raised to, let's say, the m power, we took the exponents and we subtracted them. So it would be the base b all raised to the n minus m power. So using that rule, of exponents, we would have R sub one divided by R sub two, E raised to the I, and I'm gonna factor out the I, theta sub one minus theta sub two. So putting this back into polar form, we would get that this is R sub one divided by R sub two, all times cosine, the difference of the two angles, theta sub one minus theta sub two plus I sine of the difference of the two angles, theta sub one minus theta sub two. So this is the polar form of dividing by two complex numbers. And here is the exponential form of dividing by two complex numbers. So let's put that into practice. 
by looking at a couple of examples where we're multiplying two complex numbers together or, and dividing two complex numbers together. Pull some from the book really quickly. So the example in front of us is find z times w and z divided by w. We want to write our answers in both polar form and exponential form. We're given that z is equal to 2 times the quantity cosine of 40 degrees plus i sine of 40 degrees, and w is equal to 4 times the quantity cosine of 20 degrees plus I sine of 20 degrees. So if we use our formulas that we just derived, we can say that, well, Z times W, this is equal to our R values multiplied together. So two times four, all times the quantity of cosine of the sum of our two angles. So 40 degrees plus 20 degrees plus I sine of the sum of our two angles, 40 degrees plus 20 degrees. So let's simplify that by performing our operations. And so we have two times four is eight, all times the quantity cosine of 40 plus 20 is 60 degrees plus I sine of the sum of those two angles, which is 60 degrees. And so here's the polar form of our complex numbers that we just multiplied together. Our um, exponential form, z times w, is r sub one times r sub two, which we found was eight, e to the i, and then the sum of those two angles, which was 60 degrees. So division, z divided by w, and this is equal to, the formula said that we are gonna divide our r sub one divided by r sub two. So two divided by four, we'll simplify that in a moment, of cosine of the difference of our two angles, so 40 degrees minus 20 degrees, plus I sine of the difference of our two angles, 40 degrees minus 20 degrees. So we would get one half all times cosine of 20 degrees minus I sine of 20 degrees. So that is our polar form, uh, exponential form of z divided by w is r sub one divided by r sub two, which we found was one half e times i of the difference of our two angles, which we found was 20 degrees. <laughs> 